All right, in this lesson, we will learn how to solve polynomial inequalities such as these. Um, these are the steps, but I'm just going to show you. All right, so baby steps. Um, this first problem here, I factored it out for you, but you know, just glancing ahead, in general, you're going to have to factor your own self, okay? But for now, it's factored for you. So you can just glance at this and tell me what the zeros are going to be. So tell me, what are, what are the zeros? One, One two, two four. and four. OK, those are the zeros. This is going to be all about a number line. So let's get a number line happening. And let's just plot these zeros on the number line. It doesn't have to be a ruler. I'm just going to space these out. It's a schematic. So I've got one, two, and four. So I'm just going to space them kind of evenly and put one here. And I'll put two here, and I'll put four here. OK, there's my one, two, and four. Um, now, at each one of these zeros, I'm going to have an endpoint of an interval. Um, so I have to decide, will I do open circles or closed circles right now? Um, based on this symbol right here, do you think I'm going to do open circle or closed circle? I'm going to do closed circles any time I have this or equal to thing happening. If it had been just greater than like that, then I would have used open circles. By the way, then I would use parentheses. When I have um, or equal to, I will have a closed circle. And I also use square brackets when it's time for the intervals. All right, so just look forward to that happening. Anyway, so closed circles are for my zeros. OK, now we have just divided the number line into four intervals. OK, um, we have this zone over here, this zone, this zone, this zone. Maybe I'll just color it just for a minute so I can refer. So we've got the yellow zone. We've got the uh, green zone. We've got the blue zone, and we've got the pink zone. All right, we've divided the number line into those four intervals. So what we need to do is check a test value in each interval and find out if it makes a true statement or not, all right, because true statements are solutions. Um, so pick an x value in the yellow zone, whatever you want. Zero. Uh, yeah, I always use zero when I can. So zero would be a good one. What about the green zone? Yeah, we're going to have to do a decimal, so we'll figure out what to do there. Um, uh, 1.5. What about the blue zone? X equals 3. What about the pink zone? OK, you can use 5, 10, 100, whatever you want. Just something in the pink zone. OK? So these are the values I'm going to do. Now, just to make my life easier, um, I'm going to use my TI-30 XS multi-view. So let's go to the calculator. Let's hit the table button. OK, so um, what's this function again? Uh, x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 4. So here we go. x minus 1, x minus 2, and x minus 4. OK, now I wanted to know what's happening at 0, so I might as well start off at 0. OK, so at 0, I've got negative 8. So the question is, remember, um, the original problem says greater than or equal to 0. So the question is, is negative 8 greater than or equal to 0? No. 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 OK, negative numbers are less than 0. So that's a no. That means we're not going to have any solutions in the yellow zone. So I'm just going to leave that blank. Um, I'm going to come back to 1.5 because we have to do something a little bit different because it's a decimal. But let's go ahead and look at 3. So I'm just going to scroll down and take a look at 3. At 3, I've got negative 2 happening. So the question is, is negative 2 greater than or equal to 0? Again, no. Negative numbers are less than 0, not greater. 
So that means I will have no solutions in the blue zone. So I'm just going to leave that blank. Um, what about F5? Yeah, at 5, we got 12. Okay, so the question is, is 12 greater than or equal to 0? And the answer is, yes, 12 is greater than or equal to 0. That means we have solutions in the pink zone. When you have solutions, you draw them as either a segment or a ray. If it's going to infinity, it's going to be a ray. So this arrow, this ray, represents my solutions because I got a yes over there. Um, now I need to go back and check the green zone. I kind of skipped over it because it was a decimal and my calculator is not giving me decimals right now. Um, there's a, a bunch of ways you get your calculator to give you decimals, but here's one of them. Um, go back to your table thing again. Just start that over and hit enter, but pause right here. Usually we just stick with auto. All right, and when we do auto like this, it's just giving us whole numbers. But um, let's see what this ask x feature is all about. Let's use that. Okay. Now, can you? Okay. Um, now, for me, it's already got some values there because I had typed in some stuff before. Um, but for you, you probably got blank a blank screen right now, most of you. Um, so the thing is, you can tell it whatever you want. So if I want to find out what happens at 1.5, then I can just type in 1.5. Okay, and here it's telling me the value at 1.5. You just tell it whatever values you want to know about. So here I've got a 0.625. Okay, so the question is, 0.625, is that greater than or equal to zero? Yes, all right, it's a positive number, so yes. So because that's a yes, then I have solutions in the green zone. And I show my solutions, uh, in this case, as a segment between these two endpoints. So this is the graph of all the solutions. Okay. Um, we also need to write an interval, sort of like the way we do domain or increasing, decreasing intervals, that type of deal. We need interval notation. So um, look at this first little segment here. Where does it begin? Where does it end? It goes from 1 to 2. So I'm going to put 1 comma 2 and I'm going to put square brackets on it because they are closed circles. All right, It shows that the endpoints are included. Um, what am I going to put over here representing this arrow? 4 to infinity. Four to infinity. So representing the arrow I'm going to have 4 to infinity. The 4 will get a closed bracket. Infinity always gets a round. When I have more than one interval like this, what do I always have to put in between to sort of connect them up? A U. A U, all right? It stands for union. So there it is. So that's the entire problem. Problem number one is done. Any questions? Okay, let's take a look at problem number two. Now this one is not factored for you, so you have to factor it yourself. I'm going to pause the video for a second and give you a chance to factor this problem by yourself. Go. Okay, I'm hoping uh, when you look at x to the fourth power of minus 16, you recognize this as the difference of two squares. So um, when we go to factor this, it's the difference of two squares. So um, x to the fourth power is x squared, x squared. So we're going to do x squared plus 4, and then x squared minus 4. And then it's just a matter of, um, will either one of these factor any further? Well, one of them does, one of them doesn't. Which one factors further? X, X squared. The x squared minus 4. Okay, the sum of two squares is unfactorable. So I'm just going to keep that the way it is, x squared plus 4. Um, but how does this uh, x squared minus 4 factor down? X plus 2 and x minus 2. Right, this will keep going as x plus 2 and x minus 2. Okay? Now, I need to look at this and know what the zeros are. Um, so obviously, from the plus 2, what zero do I get? I get negative 2. From the minus 2, what do I get? 2. Okay, so I have negative 2 and I have positive 2. Now, how do I get the zeros out of x squared plus 4? We could do the quadratic formula. 
That would probably be more than we need to do. Is there another way? We could just set it equal to zero. Okay, quadratic formula would work. Um, but I think it would be pretty quick. If we set it equal to zero, subtract four from both sides. Now I've got x squared is equal to negative four. You would have to take the square root of both sides. Don't forget your plus or minus. What happens? It would be x equals 2i. Okay, this is imaginary. You can't plot um, imaginary numbers on this number line we're about to do. Okay? So this is not going to be part of our uh, solution set. So I'm just going to erase this and pretend like we ne this never happened. Okay? Once I see it's imaginary, now if it had been like a, a regular number, like the square root of 3 or something, I would have used the decimal. But imaginary, get rid of it. Okay, so I'm going to go on my number line business using just the negative 2 and the positive 2. Okay, so here we go. So here's negative 2 over here, here's positive 2 over here. Um, open circles or closed circles? Closed circles again because this is or equal to business. So closed circle, closed circle. Okay, so um, what x value am I going to use in this first zone? Like negative 3, for example. You could use negative 4 or negative 5 if you wanted to. What will I use in this middle zone here? I, I like 0, okay, whenever I can. Because even if I had to do it by hand, it would be easy. What about this zone on the right? x equals 3. You know, you could use 4 or 5 or 10, whatever you want. But I'm going to use 3. Okay. Um, so you could do it by hand or use a calculator. I'm just going to use a calculator. So x to the fourth power minus 16. I'm just going to go back to that. So table function um, x to the fourth power minus 16. Okay, I'm going to stick with my ask mode. I'm just going to do ask. All right, so I wanted to know what was happening at negative 2. Uh, no, I didn't. I, I meant uh, negative 3. At negative 3, we have 65. So the question is, 65, is that less than or equal to 0? Nope. All right, that means there will be no solutions in that area. Um, how about at 0? At 0, we have uh, negative 16. So negative 16, is that less than or equal to 0? Yes. That means we will have solutions here, and I will show them as this uh, line segment. Um, and then how about at 3? All right, at 3, we're back to 65 again. OK, so 65, is that less than or equal to 0? Well, we already said no. Why are you asking me again? So we're going to leave that blank because there are no solutions over there. So this is a graph of the solution set right now. And, uh, but I also need to write it in interval notation. So what interval am I going to put? Negative 2 to 2. OK, negative 2 to 2 with closed brackets. All right, so that pink there, that would be the interval notation uh, way of writing the solution. Okay, that's it. Any questions about number two? All right, I'm going to pause the video and give you a, a minute to work on number three by yourself. Okay, so number three. Um, this one, we're going to have to use some of our skills to factor this. Polynomial, okay? It's not, a, it's not a, just a simple eyeball it and factor. We're going to use our technology. So um, I would type this uh, into my TI30XS multi-view. OK? Um, so you would just come over here, hit the table button, and type. go ahead and type it in. All right, so here I went ahead and hit the table button. I'm like, whoa, I reset the one. <laughs> OK, so we typed it in. Um, and we hit Enter. And uh, I don't want to be in ask mode this time. I need to be back on auto. Okay, um, 
So you know what? I usually start at negative 10. I'm just going to go back. So starting from here, I'm scrolling down. I'm looking for zeros on the y side. Uh, so those will be my zeros. So here I go. So I see a zero here at negative 6. So I'm going to write that down. I've got x equals negative 6. Um, and I keep going. Oh, look, there's another one at 1. So x equals 1. So I have negative 6 and I have 1. Can I get another one? Oh, look, there's a third one. OK, I've got x equals 4. Interesting. Now, guys, the, the, asking yourself the following question is very important. Um, how many zeros total exist? Three. Three. Only three zeros exist. So knowing that helps us be confident that we found all of them. So we don't need to do synthetic or, or anything. There were, there were only three zeros. We got all of them off the calculator. That's it. We can just go ahead and make the number line immediately without any work. OK, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, so we just need to check each one of these four zones. OK, over here, I'll do like x equals negative 7. Over here, I'll do 0. In this zone, I'll do 2. In this zone, I'm going to do 5. Um, again, these are going to be closed circles um, because it's or equal to. So I'll do closed circles. Um, let's see. So at negative 7, um, let's see, I already have this in here. So I'm just going to start off at negative 7. So at negative 7, I've got negative 88. So the question is, negative 88, is that greater than or equal to 0? No. no. So no solutions there. Um, I'll scroll down to 0. No, not 0. Yes, 0. At 0, I've got 24. Is 24 greater than or equal to 0? Yes. Yes. That means we have solutions there. I'll show that with a segment. Um, this was supposed to be like 2 or something. So I'll check that out. At 2, I've got negative 16. Um, negative 16, is that greater than or equal to 0? No. no. So I will leave that empty. And then I will go to 5. At 5, I'm at 44. Is 44 greater than or equal to 0? Yes. OK, that means I have solutions here. So there's the graph of my solution set. And now interval notation. Um, what will I put for this segment here on the left? <coughs> Negative 6 to 1 with uh, square brackets to match my closed circles. And then I'll put a union because I have another piece over here. And then what do I put for this arrow? All right, it goes from 4 to infinity. <coughs> square bracket, round parentheses. All right, and that is how you solve polynomial inequalities.